we kind of left off yesterday with, uh, we're about to get into uh, uh, Dianetics and uh, the E-meter. You can start there or you could backtrack or start wherever you'd like. I'm just suggesting the Dianetics and the E-meter as a starting point, but the rest is up to you, sir. Uh, the E-meter would be fine now. The E-meter was invented by a Valmy Matheson uh, about 1951. Uh, he was a chiropractor in Los Angeles. And uh, he had uh, been using it on his own and selling it on his own. Uh, and then uh, brought it to uh, uh, my father. And uh, for a short time through 51 and 52, uh, we used his e-meter, uh, but he would not let uh, he would not let my father manufacture it, and uh, my father also demanded uh, royalties and a uh, piece of the action uh, concerning its manufacture and sale. Uh, so then. Uh, through the through the uh, 51 52 era and uh, I think possibly in, even into uh, 53 we were having to uh, purchase the meter through volume Matheson and uh, but what happened here it was used in early Dianetic auditing but when Volney would not uh, turn the rights to the e-meter over to my father or give him the, a royalty, uh, my father quit using it. And there was a time period in there in which he, quote, invented and created uh, various Scientology uh, processes which did not require the e-meter. Uh, then later we were uh, a Don breeding in Washington, D.C., I think in 1954, uh, 55, uh, we, uh, Adon Breeding and uh, Joe Wallace, put together uh, our own uh, e-meter, and all of a sudden uh, Scientology could now use e-meters again, and we had, and he invented other processes which could be used with the e-meter. It was a flow and ebb thing. Um, I think I want to make this point very clear that the, as long as uh, my father had some control over the e-meter in the beginning, then it was used in Dianetics and Scientology. Uh, when he got into a war with Balney over, over money, uh, and we uh, couldn't shake the e-meter out of Volney's uh, hands, uh, then we quit using the e-meter. Uh, and it, uh, then when we invented, uh, when Joe Wallace and Don Breeding in the uh, mid-50s in Washington, D.C., uh, he manufactured, the, those two guys manufactured the e-meter in the basement of our headquarters at that time, which was 1812 19th Street Northwest, uh, and uh, then it became popular. It depended upon his control of it, uh, of the instrument. Did uh, uh, Mr. Wallace improve upon the e-meter, redesign it, or did he reinvent, well, he made it, reinvent the mousetrap? Joe, uh, Joe Wallace and Don Breeding uh, made it uh, solid state. Before that, the e-meter was a, a uh, tube affair with a lot of vacuum tubes. And uh, it was fairly good sized. It was about the size of, uh, I don't mean this as a joke, it was about the size of a bread box. And uh, then it also got to be great big projection jobs. And uh, Volney uh, kept getting uh, more and more complicated. There were e-meters with double dials, with four dials, with enough switches and dials on it to confuse you for a week. But uh, and they got to the point, there were a few of them that were about two feet by a foot by, say, 18 inches tall. And it got to weighing maybe uh, 
10 or 15 pounds, which was kind of hard to lug around from one session to another, one auditing session to another. Is the E-meter a deeply religious symbol? I don't, if it is, I don't want to go into it any further. Or is it used for other reasons? Like a crucifix, maybe? Well, I'm testifying to the, uh, to the early days uh, prior to, I believe, uh, a, uh, a court decision where it, has become, where it has now become a religious artifact. But in those days, it was, it was not. So I leave that to your decision okay, as far as to, to continue with it. But it was a, uh, an e-meter was a, basically a skin galvanometer, a lie detector. Uh, and uh, it is, would be technically called a, a balanced wheat stone bridge, which is a very simple basic electronic circuit. Uh, and uh, one of the main things that I used to remember about the e-meter was is that our favorite our favorite electrodes, which we would hold on to, was Campbell soup cans. And uh, Campbell soup probably made a great deal of money from us. Uh, but there's a small, very small, uh, at those days anyway, particularly the ones that plugged into the wall. Today they're battery powered, and the one that uh, was designed and built in the mid 50s uh, was battery powered. But the ones that plugged in the wall uh, had a tendency to. Uh, uh, because of the amount of very microscopic electrical uh, uh, flow through it, uh, electroplate your hands. That is, that the uh, the tin covering or the metal covering of the Campbell soup cans that come off in your hands, and so your hands smelled pretty weird most of the time. That kind of covers the e-meter. Uh, but as I said, the point I wanted to make about the e-meter here is, is that it ran hot and cold with Dad, uh, depending upon his control of it. Uh, and uh, uh, he would say, like, well, we don't need the e-meter anymore because we have these new, great, wonderful processes and techniques which don't require the e-meter. He said that is because he couldn't use the e-meter because Wally Matheson wouldn't uh, cough it up.